Well then, Frank. What's up, guys? It's Kevin. Is this even right? Fuck. Smooth intro. What's up, guys? It's Kevin. Um, I'm here to do a closet tour slash minimal minimizing closet shit. Um, so I learned about this thing a while ago called Project 333. Uh, where you essentially limit down your wardrobe or your closet into 33 items and I thought it was an interesting idea and I've been wanting to do it for a while so uh, this is sort of like my jab at it essentially. So basically um, the entire thing is going to be 33 items for three months um, and there's like a few caveats in there. Uh, the primary caveats would be uh, the undergarments, uh, those won't be included. Uh, that would be a huge pain in the ass if you only had like one or two pairs of underwear. Nasty. Um, as well as like socks and a few other things. I also chose not to include workout gear as long as you wear the workout items as just workout items rather than uh, sort of like a hybrid. If you wear it like casually or to work or anything like that, then that's not allowed. Um, workout gear specifically for workout gear, sleepwear specifically for sleepwear. Uh, so you can't do that like mixing and matching and stuff like that. Um, as well as I chose like sort of special occasion uh, clothing out of it. So uh, I rarely wear like super formal stuff. And the only reason that I do wear formal stuff is either for um, a professional interview, um, a presentation, uh, or some other like once every year type of thing. So I put away like a suit as well as some formal shoes and stuff like that. The rest of the clothing I'll be wearing on like a day-to-day -day basis uh, as well as uh, sort of like a um, kind of like loungewear plus going out. And sort of let me explain why I'm doing this. The primary reason is that I think I felt like after a while, because I've been into clothing, um, footwear, streetwear, uh, like menswear, stuff like that for quite a while. Um, and I've documented only like a fraction of what I went through uh, personally, because like I was super into like, you know, um, like Pharrell as a style icon, Kanye and a variety of other people very early on. And then that sort of that moment when you get your first John, <laughs> it's 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 something that like I still want to feel now and I feel almost vacant. Like you know those memes of like you feel empty after you cop your Johns and like haha we all laugh, but like a part of it a little true. Um I just want to get back to that point where it's like I pick up a John and then it's like something I really really enjoy. I really would cherish and then I feel like I've lost <laughs> sort of that um that like almost emotional connection with clothing as well as i sort of feel like i've um maybe consumed too much sure partially my fault partially on like um just how companies are just getting so good in like getting in your head when like they almost tell you you need this new thing you need this new thing and then you get into like a cycle of like damn do i need this new thing do i not and then you see all your like um, cool people or influencers, like I hate using that word, but like there are people out there with like amazing taste and these companies specifically seed those products so that they can style it really well. So it's kind of like, it's good for, I guess the culture at large, but it's also like, damn, consumers going to consume. Um, so it's kind of like this cycle of it. And I think I'm going through it. This video has been about like a month in the making. I've been just going through the process of like taking clothes out, um, putting clothes in. I've had like a few items come and go. And then I think I've, I'm sort of at like a healthy place right now. Um, my Instagram at Kevin.IMG, I'm sort of in the process of like deciding on which um, items to sell or to kind of keep. So I think when I posted that, that was like on Saturday. Um, and then I'm like deciding on like this hoodie or like an Amelion Dior hoodie, but, um, I think we'll go into that much later. So that's sort of like the giant synopsis. Uh, yeah. So let's see, will we start top down, or bottom up? So I'm going to start bottom up. Um, and also, quick thing, 
This closet, I've gotten a lot of uh, questions about it. Um, this entire closet thing is from Ikea. Um, Ikea did a collaboration with LA-based streetwear brand Stamped LA. Uh, they did it a few years ago. So if you guys are curious about it, uh, I think they do still have some like photos and references online. You might have to scour the internet for this guy. Um, I don't think I'm letting go of mine anytime soon. I really like it. It's a super clean um, closet, cloak, hanger, shoe holder design. So I think it's super sick. Um, but yeah, let's get into the shoes. So the first shoe is going to be one of my pairs for the Amelion Dior 990s uh, B2. So I ended up selling the V5s. Uh, the V5s, I ended up getting it in a seven and a half and it didn't really fit too beautifully. I mean, it worked, but if I had to choose the V5 over the V2, I ended up keeping the V2. And the reason why I say one of my pairs is that I actually have two pairs. I have one pair on ice, size seven and a half, and this is a size eight. So whichever one sells first, I'm gonna be letting go. Um, this size eight uh, is on my Grailed as well as my Instagram. Uh, if you guys don't see it on my Grailed, it's probably sold. And also a quick thing, uh, I will be doing like outfit videos at the end if you guys are curious on like what essentially my entire wardrobe would look like kind of put together in a few cohesive fits. So yeah, the reason why I picked the Amelion Dior V2s is that I think this is one of the best um, New Balance sneakers in a really, really long time. I think the colors look really well. I've had some people tell me that it looks a little bit too colorful, but I think the cream laces or the yellow laces, super, super nice. I mean, the green laces work fine, same with the blue laces. I think um, a few splashes of color aren't bad, and I do think that this is sort of like a nice medium in between like that sportsy style with like the angular shape as well as the dad shoe type of shape because it still does taper down and it still does have a little bit more of like an athletic feel without being too chunky like a dad shoe. Um, I would typically wear this um, just on like a casual day. I just wore this to the market. Um, I wore this, you know, uh, to ship some things out. Uh, even though I'm supposed to be quarantined, um, we love it. So those are the Amelion Dior 990 V2s. Next up, uh, you guys saw this coming, uh, the Jound Reebok um, Club C's. This one is my third pair. Uh, I sold my used pair, uh, I sold my second pair, and then this is my last pair that I'm keeping for personal. Um, I ended up selling my other two because I felt like there was no absolute need for me to have three pairs of Jound Club C's. Uh, these are great shoes, but I don't think I needed to stock up that heavy on them. Um, they're white shoes. They're great. Um, I've even heard some rumors of them restocking, kind of circulating. I doubt that's going to happen. I think the new New Balance collab is going to look sick, but the Club C, I mean, I might end up uh, swapping one of these shoes out for another pair of these because like, I think this is just a timeless silhouette. Um, but that'll be definitely much later down on the line, especially when these start getting worn a bit more. And you know, people do meme about the Jown Reebok Club C's, but like, it's such a classic shoe. Um, as well as, yes, the Jown logo, haha, he he, people pay resale for that. But um, the leather quality is great, uh, as well as it's just so simple that it's like hard to be offensive, I guess, in a way, where it's just, it's, it's a white shoe. That's it. Next one would be one of my beater shoes. That would be the Jordan 1 Yin Yang. So it's a customized Yin Yang um, Jordan 1. Uh, it originally had the black Jordan logo as well as it used to have like a red tongue or a red Nike Air on the tongue and I cut that off. I cut the, uh, the black swoosh off and then I sort of acetone uh, the the Jordan logo off not completely because I still wanted to see it a little bit um, And I think this is sort of my answer to like Nike being a little a Little baby and not giving any of us neutral grays or natural grays uh, anymore um, I'm sure they will eventually they're probably just mil milking it. Absolutely next up uh, These are the 
Desert Sage 350s. I think these are absolutely sick. Um, I know a lot of people are going to give me a lot of slack and a lot of shit for this, but I do think that the 350 V2 is an iconic silhouette. I think it is one of Adidas's best models. I think this is Kanye's like basically the, his Air Jordan 1 or his Air Force 1 and it's such a clean shoe. I really like the green on this. I've always been a huge fan of the Moon Rocks. Um, and then this is sort of like the Moon Rocks, but it has a little bit of that almost zen gray pop of color on the inside. So I'm a huge fan of the Yeezy 1. I'm a huge fan of the original 350. And just, I think the pop of color is very reminiscent. This is supposed to be inspired by a military jacket. I don't think this is quite the right green for it. Um, if I were to choose a green, I would have chosen like a forest green as like the knit upper. Uh, if they really did want to go with that vintage, um, that like military bomber alpha industries type look. Uh, but I do think this is like sort of like a very beautiful shape, a beautiful silhouette and very comfortable. So I'm going to be definitely putting a lot of miles into this. Next up is going to be my Air Jordan 1.5s. So when people say, oh, you got Chicago's, um, you're flexing, haha. -ha. This is actually Air Jordan 1.5. I was actually gifted this by a friend. His name is also Kevin. Shout out to Kevin. Um, he just graciously gifted me these guys and I've been wearing these every so often because they're very comfortable. Um, the leather quality on this is very similar to the new Air Jordan 1 OG 85 high. I don't know, dude, these names are getting super long, but those guys with the original shape. This leather is very similar to it. Um, the cut of this is a little bit more of like the mid. It's like in, be in that period of when Jordan was sort of making um, mids like highs, uh, where the length of the heel was a bit shorter uh, compared to modern day Jordans, like the ones like the um, like the yin yangs that I talked about. Those ones are a bit higher than this. Um, I don't mind it. Uh, I do think that the Air Jordan 2 sole is super, super comfortable. Uh, much more comfortable than the traditional Air Jordan 1. So this is like my answer to the Chicago's. It's a lot cheaper than the Chicago 1's, more comfortable, and the leather's pretty decent. So thank you, Kevin. Uh, I wear these. And here are my Union Storm Blues. Uh, so I ended up selling my black toes and I ended up picking up these guys. I I thought black, I mean, black toes are more wearable, 100%, um, 1000%, like, if you're gonna be wearing that as like a daily shoe, black toes are more wearable with more outfits. But I do think that the Storm Blue is the better of the two. I think these are just such a sick, sick, sick um, colorway. Um, I don't think, I mean, like, how many sick air, blue Air Jordan ones are there? There aren't too many. Uh, so I think this is like a perfect answer to that as well as it has sort of like a vintage look as well as this is actually in much better condition than the one that I sold and I ended up making some money while this one is basically dead stock so um, super super psyched I haven't worn these out yet because the weather's been kind of rainy and kind of shitty in California so that's why this is a sneaker not a lot of people know about this is the Asics Gel Venture 5 but it's a collaboration with a Parisian band brand Harmony Perry. Um, Harmony is started by Daniel, can't pronounce his name, um, I'll leave it somewhere over here. They are sort of like Parisian, Amelie Dior, um, sort of mix of that where it's like traditional work wear, or traditional I guess like American wear type of thing, very vintage inspired. Um, very 90s, 80s inspired. Um, and then these ASICs are just so sick. Um, I got these for a great deal, as well as I really like the pop of color with the neon. And it's just such a simple shoe with small details, like the like the silver um, eyelets, as well as sort of them just being very, very comfortable. These are actually one of my most comfortable shoes, just out of all of them, more comfortable than the 990 V2s. And this I wear, almost as much, maybe even more than the Air Jordan 1 High um, custom that I made. Yeah, and those guys are beat. Well, these guys, they are quite warm, but they aren't as worn as those guys. Not yet though, not yet. But this is such a simple like blend in between street and then smart. So I think this works really well. 
starting off with the outfit that I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing Jound J90 uh, hoodie, as well as a Raining Champs gray tee. Um, both of these guys, super comfortable. I'm also wearing uh, a necklace that my girlfriend got me. It's a Margiela uh, key, yeah, it's like a Margiela key necklace with a ring that she gave me as well, uh, as well as some vintage Levi's that I got from my friend Dante. So Dante, shout out, um, shout out Jound, I guess. Yeah, like I already don't do that enough. And shout out reigning champions. This has just been a, such a comfy hoodie. Um, if you guys do want this hoodie, it's on my grill. If it's still available, I'm still deciding between this and a different hoodie that's going to be later on. So that's already one, two, three, four, four items, F four items. Um, also this hat, it's just a hat that my friend gave me. So this would be five. So this would be five items. This would be the Jound J90 sweatpants. This is just such a nice lounge sweatpant that I wear this quite frequently. I do wish I got an extra small for this, um, as well as this is for the first release, back when they had a back pocket. So the back pocket I think isn't very useful because it's not very tight and can't really hold anything. So I think they got rid of it with subsequent releases. So this one's super sick. I really like the mesh pockets. Uh, I think that was a good detail. And this fits sort of like slim on me, not like, not as skinny or slim as I'd like to, but comfortable, comfortable lounge pants. Um, yeah, super sick. Next up is the Jound uh, Petite Standard uh, collaboration. I got these shortened to a 30, I believe. Um, I haven't worn this too much as of late. I've definitely been more on like that comfortable type of thing uh, lately, but this is definitely gonna be a heavy rotation during the summer. I know summertime it's gonna be hot, but I think summer's like the best time I get to break this in. I feel like I'll just get a lot of wear because of this, plus a white t-shirt and some white trainers would look super, super sick. I was like really debating on whether or not I wanted to let this go, but I think I'm gonna keep this as my uh, seventh item because of the fact that it's just such a nice pair of jeans. That I don't really have any pairs of jeans outside of this and my my Levi's. So this one's definitely more business-esque uh, because it is such a dark indigo. I doubt I could wear my Levi's because they're stone washed and uh, to work or anything, but this I could definitely wear to work. Next up is a represent uh, clothing smoker pant. This is sort of my dress pant that I wear, you know, more formal or dress at the pants and then wear a casual top. It's kind of like a blend in between street and smart. Um, this one is, I believe, uh, a few seasons back, but it's a nice material. I really like it. My only thing is that I have lost some weight since I got this, so it is a little bit loose, so I do have to wear a belt with it. My ninth item will be the Vujade cargo pants. This is their flared cargo pants. Super, super nice. I did a review on them. Uh, put a card somewhere or just check out my channel. Um, did a review on these guys, super, super nice. I wear these quite frequently. Dude, I have a lot of pants. Uh, as my 10th, it's gonna be the acronym P10s. Uh, my acronym P10s are gonna be one of the only slim fitting pants, as well as this has really helped me out during the winter months, especially during the time, or w w winter spring, I'll say, the winter spring uh, months because of the fact that this is basically like quite weatherproof, at least for California. Um, it's the Stotes fabric. I did have the dry skin fabric of that, but then it just fit a little bit too loose for me. Uh, I got the same size in the Stotes and it fits perfectly. I like the skinny tapered fit that the P10 has and I think this is one of their best models. I've also been debating about getting the P30, but the P30 I think wouldn't uh, lend itself well for me wearing it kind of as like a normal basis. Um, I feel like the P10 is definitely a lot more wearable in my opinion. Last but not least, uh, I did a video on these as well. Shout out Dean. This is the Ise Miyaki Om Plisse uh, pants. It's a more straight fitting pant. I really like it. I personally wear belt with it, mainly because of the fact that like, if I put stuff in my pocket, it kind of sags a little bit. And I'm not down for that. I just feel very like, uh, feel kind of weird about it. I don't know why, but this very nice i can see this being a little bit more in the rotation during summertime as well as well as i can actually wear these to more like a formal occasion so 
these are a go. So this is going to be my APC Kanye um, hip hop tee in a size medium. This is a bit more of like an oversized uh, white t-shirt. I like this because it's very flowy. Um, it's very dynamic in my opinion. Very, very soft. Dude, Egyptian cotton, 10 out of 10, especially the ones during the APC Kanye era. Such a luxurious fabric that I really, really enjoy. Next up, I have two Amazon Basics tees that I customized and I kind of shortened a little bit. Uh, so it's a bit more of like a boxy cropped fit, which I think lends itself better for my body, um, as well as I do like just the quality per value. I think the Amazon Essentials, um, essentially, essentially, um, does the job for me. Um, I don't need any crazy luxurious tee uh, or anything like that. Although Raining Champs is super nice, if you're on the budget, then this would definitely lend itself a little bit better. Um, I would just say customize it. I took off about like an inch or two off of the t-shirt length. Next two are going to be Amazon Essential Tees as well. Uh, these are the black uh, ones. So these guys, same thing as the grays. I think they're super, super nice. Uh, great quality for value. The only thing about the blacks versus the grays is that this one does catch lint a little bit better, which isn't a good thing. Um, you would probably want a lint roller because this does like captures all the lint. So I do have um, a extra large Muji tee where this is essentially what I tried to model all the Amazon tees after where it is sort of like a crops boxy fit. This is an XL but it fits like a slightly oversized medium so uh, if you guys get the Muji package tees then look out for that. It does fit like a slightly oversized medium. Now next up I'm going to be sort of giving a hybrid uh, I would say so. I have two of the Alexander um, Wang uh, Airism tees from Uniqlo, both in a size small. These are super comfortable. Uh, I think the fabric is a little bit better. My only slight complaint is that it does sort of crease up near the neck uh, after like a wash or two. Um, and that's my only complaint, mainly because of the fact that like it does look a little bit crinkly and almost like that like bacon neck that I hate getting. Um, and I just wish there was a different way to like solve this outside of creating like a ribbing. The ribbing could help too, a ribbing could help. Um, but yeah, I have one over here. And then the next one is kind of gonna be mixed in with my first jacket because it's inside because I didn't have enough wooden hangers. Love it. So next up, it's gonna be the Jound, uh, essentially coach jacket. The Jalen Coach jacket, this is made from a Japanese waterproof nylon. Um, this was actually something that was a bit talked about, um, I guess in the Jalen community, that just sounds so corny, um, where people were talking about how this is made in China and then they expect a lot higher. But I do think that the reason why it was made in China is because it's just so difficult to manufacture um, all of this within the states or within Canada, etc. I think it's like the difficulty and this would end up costing way more than 240. I do know that 240 is a little bit of a hefty cost, but this is, in my opinion, one of the most worn jackets that I do have. Um, I do think that this lends itself very well in a few different aspects where you want to wear it as like a traditional uh, coach's jacket, but the fit is also super nice so you can kind of wear it in almost like a tech wear-esque way because the nylon is waterproof. Um, as well as the inside is quite comfortable. It's like a, almost like a linen inside. It's it's like a thin a crew colored linen and I personally really like it. The buttons are super sturdy. Um, the pockets are super nice as well. My only slight complaint is that I do wish they had some sort of lining or a little bit thicker of a lining because if I wear a t-shirt and this on, it'll be a bit cold. And then if I layer on like a crew neck, then it's okay. But I do wish I could just wear a t-shirt and this jacket and it would have like some type of wind stopper material or anything like that. But I know that's a lot to ask for 240, I guess. So yeah, the John Coach jacket. Next up, going to be the John fleece jacket in a black, um, the fleece pullover, I mean, I should say in black. Uh, this one is made in the US. Uh, it's just normal, comfy fleece, um, nothing more to it, gets the job done. My only slight thing is that like the neck does feel a little bit tight if I button it up all the way. Do wish the neck was like slightly looser, uh, like just the neck area. I mean, if it's perfectly up to here, 
Uh, but yeah, it just if I button it all the way up, it's like very nice and cozy, I guess. Um, so it does feel a little bit tight, but yeah, it's just a comfy fleece, nothing more to it. Um, the fit is like slightly boxy, and I do see myself wearing both John pieces quite frequently. Um, I have been wearing the coach jacket quite frequently. Same with the pullover. The pullover is just like a quick thing to put on. If I know it's not raining, I can definitely wear this. Next up is this super, super awesome Anne Leon d'Or uh, hoodie. Uh, this was from their most recent New Balance collab. I think the graphic is just super sick, as well as I think the material is just like super, super hefty. And like, I was originally expecting like New Balance gear, um, just rebranded with the Anne Leon d'Or. Uh, but this is like actual like ML Indoor, um, I believe this is the oatmeal blank and then they just essentially just had that um, had that embroidery on it. The sort of graphic that they have on here, super super nice um, and I really do like the ribbing and how the ribbing is a little bit extended uh, as well as I like how it's a little bit not super tight and elastic on everything. Uh, that was one of the issues that I sort of had with the Jam crew neck is that it was a little bit tight at the waist and they almost created this like muffin top sort of look but with this guy it doesn't um, as well as it's a very nice hefty weight so definitely good for layering especially if you're in cold weather and it's also made in Canada as well. Moving on to the jackets, um, this is the Patagonia fleece that I always wear, this fleece bomber jacket. I swear I'm never going to find a way or find the time to like have this repaired because I just wear it so often and then uh, especially with everything going on right now, uh, like Patagonia has closed down their doors at the moment so I won't even be able to send this in but this is a Patagonia bomber jacket from the 90s I believe made in the US, uh, such a soft comfy jacket, it's a nylon outer, uh, I wish it was waterproof, it isn't uh, but in California it barely rains so this is like a vintage sort of military jacket. It's a very thin jacket, although it does look sort of bulky. Um, this is more of like a thin layering jacket. It has sort of like um, a neck, almost like the uh, almost like the polar fleece that John released. But this one, it's a little bit more of like an elastic neck, so it's more comfortable, uh, especially when you zip it all the way up. But this is just a lightweight nylon uh, as well, so it's a light jacket even though it does look sort of heavy duty and kind of military inspired, it's a very light jacket and it's just like a thrifted one, uh, just super cheap. Now last but not least for the outerwear, it is the Uniqlo U uh, Sherpa lined jacket. Uh, super, super nice. I uh, got this on sale for, I forgot how much, it was probably like 30 bucks or something like that. And it's a super thick jacket. It helped me during the winter time. Uh, I'm sure it'll help me during some of the spring nights uh, that are going to be coming up, uh, hopefully after all this bullshit passes. And this has kept me super, super cozy. Yeah, definitely. Um, and this is a little bit more of like a menswear piece item rather than streetwear, but I can definitely layer this with a hoodie and it just looks great. So the last two items uh, is going to be my cactus plant flea market hat. Uh, this one is a collaboration with um, Human Made, uh, that's Nigo's new brand currently, uh, and it's just a simple hat where it has a little bit more of like a boxier fit up top, and I like the sort of like color of it, it's like an accru natural color. I've been really digging this lately, so uh, this is my cactus plant, flea market, Human Made. Uh, next one is going to be a thousand yard studios hat. It's a comfortable flex fit hat um, Support your small company small businesses. I guess uh, this is just from a Friend his name is Robert. Uh, he runs the observer collection check it out I'll leave a link in the description down below his hats are super nice. He does them uh, hand faded uh, in the Sun like Sun faded sort of deal Super comfortable, um, the material is just very soft and it says TYS, just Thousand Yard Studios, as well as on the side it says Press. Uh, so I think it's just like a super sick fitting hat, um, as well as it's like a washed out military green. So I think it just looks super sick. So yeah, those are my 33 items. I'm gonna be doing this for three months and then I'll probably do like a recap video at the end of the three months. So today it is March 24th. March 21st, March 21st, um, and I will be doing this for three months. I'll be updating 
every so often on my Instagram about it. Uh, and I will see you guys in like an update video. I might even turn this into like a monthly update or vlog type of deal uh, where I talk to you guys about my feelings about it as well as some challenges about it and stuff like that. And I really employ you guys to maybe give it a try. You don't have to sell off all of your things that don't end up making it to your 33 items, but then you can like set them aside. I have a few items that I'm planning on selling that I'm not including into this. And then I just set those aside um, and then just like have them in like an inventory essentially. Or you can even just set aside just the clothing for yourself and then maybe at the end of the three months you can rotate out of it so that you're getting that sort of sense of excitement of like getting like a new John, but not really because you already have the John. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will talk to you guys next time. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll have the fits after and yeah, see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.